So you want to be a demon hunter. Warcraft's darkest lore. Is it really Warcraft's darkest lore to be a demon hunter? Anyway, we're about to find out and I think demon hunter is a very cool and fun class in my opinion. But yeah, let's have a look. So, you want to be a demon hunter. Well, let me tell you, it's not going to be easy. Only the most insane, vengeful elves in all of Azeroth oh, yeah? will choose to walk this path. The lore surrounding this dark art is by far the darkest lore that has ever existed in the Warcraft universe. Why? This makes Death Knights look like they're playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure over there. A lot of the what? lore I'll be covering comes from the Illidan book, which is by far the darkest Warcraft book that has ever been released, and also one of the most well-written. I but need to first, read this one. We must ask the question, why would you even want to become a demon hunter? That's something I'm asking myself right now, this expansion. Why would I even want to become a demon hunter for Dragonflight? And I'm not talking about like an OP perspective and like DPS sims. I think like demon hunter is doing pretty well. You can do like pretty high keys in this patch. But I like wondering what the heck do demon hunters have to do with the recent story and the environment and the world? Because demon hunters, just like their name suggests, they are hunting for demons. In the Dragon Isles, there are no freaking demons. Like we are done with demons. So what's their purpose? Like maybe they need like a, a renaming or something or we need demons again. Maybe we need to, uh, an expansion that includes a lot of demons. Like, I don't know. But yeah, like, I feel like Death Knights are more universal, they could fit into more environments because they're just undead knights that call upon the power of death to slay their foes and stuff, right? But demon hunters, like the name, they hunt for demons. Where are demons in Dragon Isles? I haven't found them yet. For most that walk this path, the Legion has taken everything from them. The demons have broken their families they and seek left revenge. their homes in ruin. They are an intergalactic swarm of death and destruction that knows no mercy. For Blood Elves, their home was wiped out by the Scourge, a creation of the Legion that wreaked the same havoc on their lands. During the Third War, the forces of Azeroth fought back against the Legion, but an elf named Ilden had a One unique second. approach to combat. He absorbed the fell magic, transformed yeah, he was the OP character in Warcraft, but there's something I I'm so confused about. So the Scourge was made by the Legion. Okay, like with Meganis, this and that. Yeah, 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 we know this. But doesn't like necromancy itself come from the Void? I think I've read or heard somewhere that anything related to death comes from the Void or something. Like for those of you that are like super, super deep into the lore, like, let me know in the comment section if that's true. But I've heard that the void is responsible for raising the death and uh, the dead and not fell magic. I could be wrong though. Elf named Ilden had a unique approach to combat. He absorbed the fell magic, transforming himself into the very thing he swore to destroy and use their own might against them. Behold the flames of Asenoth! You know nothing of power! There we go. You are not prepared! <laughs> His most famous line. Oh wow. That was this cool. This is too easy. The radical lengths Illidan went to defeat the Legion were controversial but some elves were left inspired by his tenacity. No form of like combat you. would even hold a flame to the carnage Illidan committed with his demonic powers. Later on, Illidan would venture to the Outlands to amass his own army of demons to defeat the demons. And That's many so Calderai and Cinderai ventured into this dangerous land to learn how- This is something that blew my mind in TBC about Illidan because he's a demon hunter. He despises and hates demons and he became a demon to kill demons. But now he's allied himself with demons. And this is something that I had no clue what the heck what they're thinking when they did it like that. Like. He should have made some sort of demon hunter only faction or something and not actually have demons to serve him. Like, this is something that actually is against it. Like, that's why he looked like he became like super, super evil. Like, he has always been some sort of gray character from like a lore perspective because he does like 
evil to defeat evil basically and that, that makes you kind of gray because you are like literally evil but you also fight against evil to do something good for the world and protect it because he said himself in like that's like a cinematic where he says that he needs to like freaking sacrifice something to protect Azeroth and stuff so so in a way you could say he is good but I I would look at him like more like ah he's a great character because he also does like a lot of evil stuff right and this is what makes him so fascinating as a character. I, it is kind of interesting when you have like very important characters that are on like the gray side because they can be either bad or good. And it also depends on how you look at them, right? Like from which uh, viewpoint. From the viewpoint of the greater good, then he's good, right? But if you look at like small things, then he's like evil, right? And yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. I really like Illidan's character. I think he's cool how to wield fell magic as he does. I guess other races can be demon hunters, but there really has <laughs> no been demon no history hunter. <laughs> of such. There was mention of a human demon hunter a player, no in the Alliance and Horde compendium, but this is a very outdated book that probably isn't canon. Let's, let's make let it me canon, just make please. this incredibly clear. Uh, the elves seeking out Illidan are all insane. In order to get to the Black Temple, say. they have to venture through some of Warcraft's most hostile environments, filled with fell orcs, and they have to survive reavers, this. demons, and hundreds of other things trying to kill you. In the Illidan book, it explains how Zangermarsh is filled with toxic gas and poisonous insects that will sting you, and then grubs will wiggle out of your eyes and skin. Ugh. Oh, hell no! Also, you have to watch out for Wardens, a uh -oh. specialized military force of assassins and jailers of Night Elf society who deem Ilden and his use of demonic powers as an abomination. And they hunt down anyone following a similar dark path of harnessing fell magic, no matter what their intentions are. Now, the Blood Elves that want to become demon hunters have it a bit easier. Most of, if not all of them, are followers of Kael'thas Sunstrider, who's one of Illidan's closest allies, so they probably didn't have to wander through Outlands yeah, trying to Yeah, could just be teleported. Them. Suffice to say, getting to Illidan's fortress called the Black Temple is a challenge in itself. And we haven't even started the process of becoming a demon hunter yet. If you actually survive getting to the temple, you'll be met with elves insane as you are. In the lower quarters of the temple, there are refugee dens filled with elves, some screaming in insanity and others shrieking in despair. In the wow. book, some of these psychotic characters include a night elf whose face is half burned and caved in from an infernal, another who <laughs> maniacally laughs at literally everything, and probably the most brutal is a night elf whose kids were burnt by the legion and now straps a charred husk of her child against her at all times. One night, she was screaming over and over again about the burning, and a blood elf tried to silence her. She killed him. <laughs> this game is rated T for Teen. If you arrive wow. and haven't been killed by the other refugees, you'll finally start your training, which is just as, if not more dangerous than the venture to get here. One in five elves will survive this transformation. The rest will die in a multitude of ways I'll explain soon. First, our training starts off pretty tame. You'll learn about demons, the methods of infiltration, and the basic wielding of weapons. And throughout this training process, demon hunters develop a weird sort of companionship as they're all filled with rage, grief, and they're all a little bit insane. But the next portion of but training they have this in common with each other, right? So. An aspiring hunter must perform a ritual where they must fight a demon one on one. Most often, the demon they must slay is the very type that killed their family making the bloody duel even more grim. Wow, that's cool. After defeating the demon in one-on-one -on -one combat, now you must perform the most sickening act in the transformation process. One must cut out the heart of the demon and consume it. Ugh. You feel the burning Tastes heat disgusting, from the magic probably. radiating down your throat. You feel its power kicking in your stomach. Your mind will go blank and 
Endless torrents of the Legion's destruction will devour your consciousness. You will witness countless worlds cleaved in twain. Count but that is probably why they are so OP, because of like they absorb a portion of the power of the demon that they actually kill and during the quest line, like the starting quest for a demon hunt, you actually do that. Like when you get freed, you're even asked to kill like some demons that are also in those in this kind of prison, right? And you absorb some of their power. Like this is the cool thing. I actually think from a lore perspective, maybe demon hunters are a little bit even stronger than death knights. King in your stomach. Mine will go blank and endless torrents of the legion's destruction so cool. will devour your consciousness you will witness countless worlds cleaved in twain countless lives dragged into endless suffering and countless swarms of demons enacting the legion's will wow. all the realities all futures crushed under the heel of inevitable fell might you will be forced to witness the moment of grief that compelled you to become a demon hunter over and over again. So they become more insane. grief, rage, and insanity for an endless eternity. And the worst part of it all is... Oh no, it can't be, it's... This video is sponsored by Empires ah, and Puzzles, on. an amazing free-to-play match three RPG game that is easy to learn but hard to master. You see, in this fantasy universe, you will travel That's across faraway lands and match the color of shields in a very epic, strategic, and visually stunning fashion. There are over 400 heroes you can collect. New heroes are released monthly, but my so what are you waiting for? Check out my link in the description and get in on the most epic match three game of all time that you can find on iOS and Android. Empires and puzzles. Okay, back to the endless pain and suffering you will experience eating a demon heart. Wait, the absolute oh, you turn pain blind? and misery demon hunters experience on their demon heart induced torment causes them to rip out their own eyes in insanity. Whoa. What's left of the demon hunter is a broken, tortured husk of who they once were. Now they wow. observe the world around them with a spectral sight, letting them sense the essence of demons around them because of the practical stuff about magic, I don't know. Not only that, but they must wrestle with the demon they now have inside of them. It will taunt them, telling them to give into rage and fully envelop themselves with demonic energy. In an ironic twist of fate, it is the demon that they consumed that may consume them. What's next in the process Wait. is to imprison the Is it actually possible for the demon that was consumed to break free and like take over your body or something? Or is that not possible? I'm like wondering that now actually. Because if you have like an essence of a demon, you can the demon actually take over like is it kind of like you have to, I mean, not just self-control your rage, but like your inner demon, or if you have like multiple ones, your inner demons, literally. And then you just like have to be the one in control or something. Like, I'm actually wondering about that. The demon within. Initiates are bound to an operation table and intricate magical arcane tattoos are carved into their flesh. They look cool. With a specific purpose to bind the demon within them making it easier to harness its strength. Over the next period of time, an initiate's body will slowly transform. Horns will sprout from their head, claws will emerge on their hands and feet, pronounced fangs will fill their mouth, yeah, they're and hardened demons scales now. will sprout from their skin. Some initiates will not be able to handle the transformation process, realizing that they are turning into the very thing they swore to destroy. Others will not have the fortitude to keep the demon bound within them, causing them to lose all of their sanity and go into a murderous rampage until they are slain by the other hunters. You could lose your best friend like that. a small percentage of demon hunters that do learn to harness these new powers oh, will become okay. Warcraft's most effective weapon in defeating the Legion. They have seen the power their demonic enemy wields, and they know the only way to truly defeat them to get the is same to level. wield the very power that they harness. <laughs> now a demon that a demon hunter chooses to consume does have different effects on their appearance and powers. So a hunter who consumes a Felguard will look and fight differently than one who consumes a Succubus. 
But unfortunately, we don't really see these different effects in-game. Most yeah. demon hunters continued to live in the Black Temple and work with Lord Illidan to control all of- Yeah, like, you should get, like, from this fell guy, like, super muscular and maybe taller, right? And from the succubus, you should, like, look more kind of like an elf, like, less of a demon. Like, you should get the better looks or something. Outlands until the events of the Burning Crusade. During the expansion, the champions of Azeroth assaulted the temple because, well... Ilden was attacking the Horde and the Alliance there, enslaving the broken Draenei, and his allies are sucking out all of the yeah, water the out of the planet and the attacking Shadrath. So, he's less of an anti-hero and more of just an actual villain, even if it's all in the name of defeating the Legion. Anyways, he's changing a special force of though. demon hunters are sent to a Legion world called Mardoom to collect a relic called the Sargerite Keystone. He's good, then he's evil, the then he's good, then evil again, then world. good again, basically. Players go to retrieve this Keystone and teleport back to the Black Temple to realize Ilden has been defeated. And the Wardens imprison all of the demon hunters and store them in the Vault of the Wardens. They don't kill the demon hunters because they see them less as people and more as weapons that they can store for safekeeping, just in case. Years later, during the Legion expansion, the Legion has invaded Azeroth once again, and the Demon Hunters are broken free by their jailers to fight the Legion. And you probably know during the expansion that, uh, yeah, we kind of defeat the Legion for seemingly ever. Not only that, Illidan, their leader, kind of just disappears into space, so they don't really have any sort of guidance. So, for most Demon Hunters, it's like, now what? Now they're just tormented monster people who sacrifice yeah. all of their humanity with no real purpose. Yeah, what is their like, purpose now? Yeah, I bet there are random demons still hanging out across the universe, but their problem is pretty much solved. So what are they doing now? I can't imagine a demon hunter just becoming like a fisherman or a <laughs> world-renowned chef. Or a, a dragon-riding adventurer. Like, this is something that's what freaks me out. Like. I wanted to level up a demon hunter, but I picked up a, a hunter again. I actually rewrote my hunter to a tauren and I, it was like I almost made a blood of demon hunter. But then I was thinking during dragon isles, there are no demons, right? So what is my purpose there? So I thought about like either I will grind up when I make like a new character, it will either be a hunter again. It will be maybe a shadow priest. Or it will be a mage or something like that. So, so I've leveled up actually a hunter and a mage for for this uh, patch, and maybe I will also get a shadow priest up. And after that, I will see if I go for a demon hunter. But but I feel like from an immersion perspective or a P perspective, I don't know what they are, what the heck they are even doing in the freaking Dragon Isles. Like, what's the purpose of a demon hunter in in the Dragon Isles? Because it's not a dragon hunter; it's a demon hunter. I mean, like, <laughs> like literally a fisherman. Yeah, for sure, world-renowned chef. Yeah, world-renowned chef. That's like maybe most new additions to Warcraft's lore during an expansion, they're promptly ignored by the time the next expansion rolls around. Sadly, yes. So we're kind of just left in the dark on what they're actually. Only Death up Knights to. are but, very you know, after universal. seeing all the well-written Dragonflight side quests that tackle forgotten about lore subjects like this, I'd love to see this done for a Demon Hunter at some point. Yeah, after please. covering the insane lengths it takes to become a Demon Hunter, I think it's safe to say that Demon Hunters. Are the edgiest class in all. They need of a life. new faction. I mean, yeah, Death Knights are edgy too. But what makes Demon Hunters a step above is that they're willing participants in becoming a monster. They choose yeah. to seek out the Stark Path by their own free will True. and are insane enough to carry it out in the name of revenge. Death Knights are doing For Death Knights, this against their. They were just raised to become zombies against their will. Yeah, they're which forced. I think makes them much less cool. Also, I made a Demon Hunter. <laughs> so, really. Uh, I'm a bit biased. Thanks again to Empires and Puzzles for sponsoring this video. You can click the link down below to get started. But yeah, this is the thing about Demon Hunters. What is their freaking purpose now? Like, what are they doing in the Dragon Isles? Like, it's cool. Like, what I love about Demon Hunters is like the skills look freaking cool. I love the way you run. With those war glaives, it looks freaking freaking nice. They have like some of the best animations in WoW. And I love when they transform, they look so freaking OP. And this eye beam, I really love this skill, it looks so cool. It's very, very good in PvP. I know some really, really good PvP players that are like, just crushing other players on the Demon Hunter and New Kingdom. And you can like have a lot of burst on it too. I love this for PvP. 
but from a law perspective and like an environmental immersion perspective i feel like demon hunter are like kind of irrelevant or like overlooked by blizzard in, in the dragon isles so yeah i wonder what the next expansion will be what the next patch will be and if they find a way to make demon hunters from a story perspective more relevant again what i can see them doing like i hope blizzard does this at least for now until we fight legions that some famous demon hunter characters that we know from legion are forming some new faction and i don't know they have like some fancy name and their purpose is to actually protect azeroth not just against demon but against like something else they're like some sort of not like a mercenary faction or maybe that would be actually cool like a mercenary faction kind of like the even even blade for the death knights and they also do something for the greater good of Azeroth, but they are not just demon hunters itself, but maybe they have some NPCs that are, I don't know, regular hunters or something else. And from a story perspective, they became now allies with some other factions and stuff, and their purpose is no more for demons, but they're trying to actually blend and fit in into Azeroth and become kind of like normal again, but still keeping their demon powers. And now they are like some sort of mercenary faction instead of demon hunter faction, but with the power of demon hunters. Like they could do something like that maybe perhaps, and then they would a bit fit more into the story. Or maybe we get like at least each exp expansion, some sort of demon zone. Or like at least one dungeon that is about demons or so. Like something so people can like immerse themselves again into the world of Azeroth as a demon hunter. But let's see what Blizzard has uh, planned for the demon hunter in the future. I'm actually pretty sure we're getting soon a new class at some point. Because I, I've heard that like some rumors that they have like a list or something. And there are like some potential future classes including the Tinkerer that maybe could come out. Let's see. But that would be cool if they actually do add a new class like the Tinkerer. Because then if you are a Goblin, Mecha Gnome or Gnome. Or even like a Dark Iron Dwarf. I think would really fit those those races to be a freaking Tinkerer, right? But let's see. <laughs> then maybe you have skills where you shoot rockets and stuff. Or throw some, some bombs that function differently from the one from the Survival Hunter. Maybe you can freaking summon a robot that fights for you for some seconds. That would be actually really cool. Like we need a Tinkerer. Please, Blizzard, if you're watching this, give us the Tinkerer. We've been asking for it for ages. And Tusker is a playable race. So, yeah, next expansion or next big patch Tusker as a playable race. And a new class called the Tinkerer. I would be happy. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. I wish everyone a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time.